Hello and welcome to my channel. If it's your first time here, I'm kind of used to do this kind of trans page transition based on scroll using 3JS and WebGI. And this is what we are going to build together now. So without any further time, let's jump into the design first and then the code. If you already have the design you want, you can jump directly to the coding part of this tutorial. So let's start by finding a good model to use. I just found this new Drew machine, which I like it very much. The mesh looks simple and let's try to use this one. I already downloaded it. So if you want, you can click here. It is free to use and uh, was done by Fernando Quintin. So once you have the model, all you have to do is go to the Pictronics website and then to WebGI. You go to WebGI SDK and click here on last version. Then you will be directed to the editor. So in the editor, you can just grab your downloaded file and drop there and you are ready to go. Like you already have your model. So I downloaded it in 2K, so that's why the resolution is not that good. But we will just like make this as a demo, as a something that you want to practice before doing different things. So let's start by changing some things here. Uh, I don't need the ground, so I just disabled it. it. I will change some properties on the material of this thing here. So you just click on it and then you can change like a lot of things here. I will change the roughness because I want this to look more reflexive. I know it's not accurate, but for me it will work better. Then I want to add some lighting. So in the scene, I go to lights and I, let me see, no, progressive shadow. I can change it in the environment. So let's see what happens when I change the rotation of the environment and also the intensity. Yeah, it looks better already. So I don't think I need to change the, the colors or to add more lights but if you want to you can click here to add a directional light for example and then you can change like the rotation of the light so you can create like a different light setup for your scene for your objects let's see i never done this project before so you will see for sure my mistakes, including my English mistakes, because I'm not a native speaker. So please forgive me. I will enable shadow because it looks better here, like on this wall here, when you don't have shadow enabled, you get some strange effects. So I will enable this shadow in the end. And now all I have to do is to position my object the way I want this to look like in my in my scene, like in my 3D file when I export. Uh, I will not enable, I think, anything else than what is already the defaults, like screen space reflection. Yeah, let's keep the screen space reflection. So, okay, now what we can do is go to animations to record this camera mm. position to use like in our design. I would just position here the way I like it, it and I think it should be okay. Then I go to camera views and add current view. This will give us this camera here. So we are just recording it 
because we we're going to use those positions when we create the 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 three JS experience, the Web GI experience. For now, I want to make this in for our design. So let me just go to tone mapping and click background because I want this to be like totally transparent. Then I go to export, image export and download. And once you have the file downloaded, like I already have like a pre-made design here, which is pretty basic. There is nothing too fancy here. I'm just making like three simple blocks with a font and some colors. And I will just grab this image here to use as a reference. So like when we create the 3JS experience, we can change a lot of those things there. So this is just like a placeholder of the way I want things to look like. So I already have the first scene there. Let's change the camera to make the second. So I want this to be like more or less like this, I guess. Because it says comfortable to use. So maybe we can focus more on maybe this angle here. Yeah, like, and the, the challenge is to always to find good cameras and good visuals for your design, to, just to give you ideas. So I have the second one. Let's see how it looks like this way. Yeah, I think it will work like this because it's it kind of match this background, which I like it. Don't bother with this cut here because this is not happen. Because when we are looking through the browser, you can only see like something like this. So this will be not cut out like this when we are creating. We'll be creating the 3JS part of it. Like and for this last part here, I want also to record this camera. So let me just go to animation, camera views add current views so now i have two cameras if i press like focus view i can see this one and this one like it's almost done as you can see so let's make the last one like here for this vision because it talks about wood and metal so i want to make the conversation about this part here so again Add current view to have one more camera view, then go to export again, download image again, then let's put this in our design and see how it looks. I'm planning also to make like a configurable view of the the jewelry machine. Let's see how it will look in the end and if it we work so for now that's all that we need to do so i already have something to work on and you can obviously change yours on your side and make a different object and a different design and a different like object if you want to to make your different so we'll be creating the 3js part of it and then we'll be creating the design part of it, like putting those texts on the HTML and how to mix this together with GSAP and Scroll Trigger to create the kind of animation, the kind of page that I'm, I've been creating from my previous videos. So let's see, let's jump into the code now. So now you have this like on your design, let's work with the model and let's code. And what all we have to do is go to export, asset export, GLB export using Draco compression. 
and then export GLP file. This will generate like another file for you with all the configuration we have done inside this file here. And then we can follow the web GI documentation if you want to see, just go to the website, web GI SDK, get started. And here you can find this web GI starter template. So you can click here, you can click on use this template to clone for your so I will make this like real web GI tutorial and then let's create repository from it and this will create a copy of that repository in your account like in mine here so you can go now to the clone this project into your computer so i will clone this and it's done let's open in visual studio there it is we already have it and let's make some changes like now i guess we need to install all the dependencies so the first step as is described here, you need to install the dependencies. So let's do it. npm install and you start in downloading all the dependencies. It might take a while, but usually it is quick. So I will wait for it for it to finish yeah so now it is finished and then the next instruction is to run start so let's do it npm start and let's see what happens I will close the editor because I guess we don't need it anymore, but we for sure back for it when we need change things. So it says to me, go to localhost. So let's buy it. And there it is. We already have the file. We don't have any model because we need to change this Oh, yeah, we have, we already have a model here, which is looking good. And all we have to do now is to change things to be able to use our model and start building our, our page. So let's start by going into the scripts file. It is a TS file. It is a TypeScript file. Let me just organize things a little bit better here. And I hope the font size is okay because like it is kind of small for me, but let's see. So it is loading the model from assets as you can see here. So we don't want this. We want our dream machine. So all we have to do is go to assets and then I will just drag and drop the file that I downloaded from the editor, I would just rename this to like real. And then in this file here, I will change this to real and save it. It will auto reload and that's it. We already have, as you can see, like the file came in the last camera position we left. The, the file so we have to change this because I want the first camera position but we can change this into the code we don't need to bother for this now because we need to build our interface so the first thing we need to do is to change this container to to have like all the size of the screen so Let's change in styles. 
because it is 80 by 80 and with margin we don't want this so we want this to be 100 and without box shadow also we want the body to have margin zero and padding also zero so if you remove all the borders all those small borders here we already have border radius because webgi canvas is also with border radius and we don't want this so we remove and now we have like a full screen web experience which is pretty cool like we already have the dragging model you can rotate you can see all the beautiful lights you can zoom in and zoom out so only this is already cool but what we want to build is something like this here so we will start by creating the sections and defining the camera positions and the texts and everything so let's start by doing this header here so header will be something like here on the HTML, let's just create before the canvas, and let's add like a section. It could be a network, and let's make two elements here. Let's make one. Uh, they are one SVG and one button. So let's make the image. I will left this empty for now. And let's make the button. Button would be pretty simple. It is just by now. So let's just save it and now the things start to become like strange because where is my button probably it is behind or after your webgi experience so let's check here the nav bar is somewhere there so we need to make some coding some css to be able to see it so I will change this to position absolute and now I can see there is like my my button floating somewhere there. I will make this top also zero left zero. So we copy all those declarations. Let me make like a class here called nav bar and then I will go to CSS nav bar and paste all of that and i guess we already can see there let's style this button also nav bar like my way of doing code is very crappy don't follow everything I do. Probably you know more than me to be able to create yours. So I'll make this background black color white border known border radius to send no, it's also add a padding. Let's see how it will work. Yeah, let me just export this one here because I will make this all one one object. So this and this will be a group, and then I will export this. As SVG. Now back to the code. Let's insert this here. And 
okay let's see what happens yeah it is there this net bar is so strange i guess i need to make it with it 100 percent yes and i guess it is wrong i just need to make this here Yeah, let's change to this way, and then I will make margin of, of 10 pixels. Yeah, let's make 30. And margin right. Empty. Yeah, it is not working margin. So, okay, let's just keep the things that are working yeah and now let's try to fix this would be easy like as margin right for pixels here and also on the image so here and also I can create a class of logo and also putting a margin left for sure you know better how to solve this but I'm just doing my way yeah so now we have like the header kind of the header if we, we have a lot of things to change but everything is working and as you can see everything covered by the everything is covering the 3d which is pretty much what we need so now let's change the fonts i'm using the ps pm sans google font so let's try this one i will use all those the same files so i will link this into my html here so we just make a little bit of organization and then I will set the font family as this on the CSS now I guess we already have it yeah here we are using it already I will change the font size like font size for me okay it's not always default so maybe you you see that i will change this in the future so now for the title it is just a normal tag title so let's make this our first section so here we have section H1 and I guess we don't need to break line here yeah it is there so now we need to fix this all of this so let's give this a class section and this section will be So now what I want now is to be able to see my my file here, my HTML, but I can see because it is behind this WebGI canvas. So if you, for example, change the height of it, even changing the height of your section, you cannot see. You can guess it is there, but you cannot see. If you change like the C index you still cannot see because the WebGI canvas is covering everything so you could do something like this minus one here and then you should be able to see it here but it is a lot of confusion because this is not transparent and what I want is to make this transparent so I just go to the, the TS file and then I set 
to use RGBM to pulse and then I will be able to see through the 3D scene so now the 3D scene is in front of my HTML and is, it is actually transparent and this is what I want I want this to, need to be transparent so now I can move forward and fix like this one here I will make this section I guess adding having a padding let's say 40 pixels let's see yeah it, it will also look strange because it will generate padding wrongly so I will make padding for this one here uh, so margin left five percent let's make like 15 percent i think would be better and then font size be ram let's see yeah this one matches more the design and also line height eight ram yeah i guess this would be better but it is confusing because this model is like covering everything here but we'll fix this soon so I'll just make this here in our class so let I just make a class here now it is so if you now it's the tricky part because if I create like another section I will create this here. I already have this commented out. So I will create this and the, the sign says comparable to use. So I will get only this to place here. And also I will grab this one here and make up e e paragraph. Just press very roughly to have something on the screen to be able to scroll. And as you can see, I can scroll because I have the model in front of my 3D of my file. So if I use the arrow on the keyboard, I can see the scroll. But I cannot use my scroll because I have the 3D model like with the pointer events. And this is the tricky part. If you want to scroll, uh, you set the, the the pointer events on this one here to be false. I guess it will be on WebGI Canvas container. Let's see if it works. Pointer events none. Yeah, so now you can control the 3D anymore, but you can scroll. And this is what we are going to use to be able to take control over the 3D or the scrolling experience. If you want to have control over that, you can change this property on JavaScript when you click, for example, on customize. And this is what we are going to do in our next video. We will create a, like a customizable drew out of this but for now what we want is to be able to scroll and as we will scroll you, you control the camera position in that on that thing so this is how i do it so i will keep changing it for to match this one here so for this section here i will be using h2 instead of h1 just because I want something different, like smaller, to be able to use. Yeah. And for this section, I will change some things. I will make this like direction column. I will align items flex end. Yeah, and for this paragraph, I will make a with it. Let's see. This one, I think it should work. I will create like a container inside here. 
just to be able to align them properly. And like I said, you can do things in a different way. Or, or whatever name you want to give this. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's better. And now I think I can get this container here. and give this section like a different alignment so i make this flat sand yeah so i'll just change this property here but i will give another another class here very messy i know I change a lot of those things after I finish what I want because I want to reach the most important part of it, which is the the 3D it's a 3JS part of it. So margin right 10%. I think it's too much, maybe. 10% is good enough. Yeah. So now we have two sections, like one and two. I will just make the, the custom background this one here. I will make this, I will try to make this without SVG, which I would like use normally. So I will try to do it here with only the CSS. So I already have like a div here, like this custom background. I will make this just like a huge element. Here you have the element. So I will try to make this a huge element on the background. So I'll make this position absolute. And zero uh, but i need to give this container the position relative i guess because otherwise i cannot get this here yeah uh, i gave it to the wrong person i need to give it here for its father yeah so i need to add this here on the second position relative and then for this one here let's change some things i will make this like a huge width of and also huge height And then I guess I can rotate also. Yeah. Like I said, I use this visual thing a lot to be able to get what the results I want. I don't know if it's right, but this is the way I, I do things 100% yes. So it, it is kind of matches what I want, but I guess the C index needs to be changed. This one. Yeah, so not make minus one. I would just make this one here. The index one. Yeah, so let me put this all the values that I get here. And I do this by copying and pasting the values from the browser because it is easier for me. Now we have it, just change the color of it. I get 
this color from here if I can click on the element yeah that's the color yeah and we have it there so we have two sections already and now we can move to the part where we can control the camera i can construct all the other sections because it will follow the same so it will be all the same thing and i will create other the other html sections and then we can jump into the 3js part of it again which will be creating the scrolling and the intro animation for this one here now that we have the page we already have all the main sections we, we have in that layout it's just like pretty much basic css and html and now we are going to fix the scrolling page part of it which is the most desired one so i will start this by tweaking some things here i don't want to add all the base plugins i will just add them manually so i will comment out those two lines and then i will choose manually the ones that i want so i will use the tone map plugin and i will add it here uh, the SSR and SSRO diamond plugin we don't need. Uh, we need the bloom plugin. I don't think we are using the temporal. Let's see. Let's save this and let's see if we can get the same result without any errors. Yes. And it is complaining about something here, I guess. I don't understand fully the dependencies, but probably like one depends on each other. So like there is some another dependency for tone mapping, and I guess could be this G buffer. Let's see. Yes, it is. So now we don't have warnings except for this one, which is pretty normal. So now what we're going to do is to make our scrollable page working as we scroll, we can rotate that model. So the first thing to do is to install GSAP. So um, I will stop this and then npm i gsap. And let's wait this finish so i will start the server again and then let's import this app so let's make import this app from this app and it's calculating yeah it is okay uh, let's just save it to see if we don't get any errors yeah it is working now let's import scroll trigger import from gsap slash scroll trigger and it's also calculating yes it is there and now we need to register this plugin first to use. So gsap dot register plugin and then scroll trigger. And for now, that's all that we need. It will auto reload. Nothing will change because we need to set up like the the animation based on the scroll position. So what we are going to do is to like i will clean up things a little bit here just to be able to see better things so i will remove all the imports we are not using it from the web gi and then i will just like remove all those lines also remove the environment as you can see the 
the file size, like the line, like the number of lines is almost like 50. So it is pretty simple to use at this point. So what we are going to do now, we are going to set up a function to create the animation. So let's say function setup scroll animation. And here we're going to create like a const tl for timeline gsap dot timeline and then that's it for now it, that's all that we need and then we need to make the first animation so for the for from the first section to the second section so i will make this first section so what we have to do is tl for timeline dot do we are going to animate something and then respect all the parameters the first parameter we need is something to animate so we need to declare like what we want to 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 animate and to do this we have to declare a, a, a like something to be able to access the camera and the target from from the the viewer so what we are going to do we are going to here as asset management plugin and after that declare a const camera it will be viewer dot scene dot active camera because like you can have more than one camera uh, we are getting the active camera here then we have to have another const for position and this will be camera dot position and then another const will be our target as you can imagine the camera it's made by two parts you have the camera head and you have the camera target which the camera is always point at when you are using the, the orbit controls so you need to declare these two to be able to move them together with the camera and we will see this in a minute how it works by checking the the, the editor for the webgi but with this let's try to animate this camera at least for for something different from what we already have so let's make it two and let's move first only the camera position. So with the position, this position will be the, let's make it like x.5. Let's see if something change and let's make this a scrollable like something because if you do it like this like this you animate as soon as you call this function here which is right wrongly it is set up scroll animation and it's complaining about something i probably wrote it wrong i guess no it is because it's out of the scope so this function here must be inside this other function set up viewer because it, this is the only thing that it is called when you start your scene so now it is okay and then let's see what happens when we call this so I, I just call this setup scroll animation when the experience start and seems like nothing is happening probably because we don't have like the all the other parameters we need like the duration or anything else so we need to to finish our our setup here so i will make this like a scroll trigger animation scroll trigger yeah 
and then in here you can pass like an object with all the parameters you you need the first parameter would be the trigger so this will be the object that will trigger the scrollable animation in our case here this will be the second like the second section because this class will be the thing that will animate that camera as you scroll so you already have this one the second session is here and when you start scrolling the second section will control the animation for the object and in fact for the camera because we are not rotating the object so our trigger will be the 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 second uh, section what we are doing now is trying to animate that that camera for the 3d object but even if i change the duration here let's say like duration to four seconds for example and save nothing will happen and why because for default webgi is like only rendering when it sees some change and no change is happening right now so we need to create a function to tell to gsap to call over the animation so we can update the the scene so we will create this function here so webgi update and then i will create like uh, needs need update so, and i will set this to true and then i will create a function to update on update and this is the function we'll be calling inside the the gsap animation and this will set the needs update to true and we will do like the viewer dot renderer dot reset shadows we need to call this method to update the shadows as the camera movement happens then we need to have like a hook to see every previous frame if we need to update this so when the camera stops this stops running so we will do like viewer dot add event listener and the event will be grab frame preframe yeah and let's set an hour function here and inside this we will do like if needs update so if it needs update is true we need to update we can see camera we can tell to, to make camera dot position updated and set to false and then camera target updated and set also in this case we will set to true and then we will say needs update equals false so after this running we don't need to update anymore and then all we have to do is to pass this on update here because it is having a method like on update here as you can see so as the name of the function is the same they will talk together and make this happen so let's save and let's see what happens so as you can see now the animation is happening like i'm just changing the x to the phi value so it's coming from the position originally set in the file in the glb file to this one this position here so if i also want to change for example the z axis let's see let's say z minus three save and you can see the animation happening already just because of this like update function here so now it is working all we have to do now is to set up the scroll trigger animation because now 
the animation is happening every time we save the file. But what we want is to animate this as our camera, uh, as our, our scroll happens. So the way of do doing this is by setting up here a scroll trigger animation. So what you do is to make this like here, scroll trigger, and we can pass like an object, and inside this object we will have like the trigger. In our case, the trigger will be the second section, because this second section it will start the animation. I will show you this as markers because you can see better what is happening. So I will enable markers here and set to true and let's see what happens. So now, as you can see, we have the start and the end here all together because we need to tell the, the scroll trigger where we need to start the animation and where this animation will finish. So I will pass some, some more arguments here like I think I forgot also to tell this is a class. Let's see if this fits. Yeah, now it's better. So as you can see, like the start is here and the end is here. So as we scroll, this animation will happen as we scroll. So now it is right, but we need to pass some more arguments here. Like for example, the start it will start at top bottom. This would be needs to be string. So when the top of the second uh, uh, section hits the bottom, which is this exact case here, and it will end when the top of the section it's the top of the viewport so now you can see like the start and end and as we, we scroll the positions are correct now i will make this a scrub animation scrub group oh my god scrub group And I guess now the animation happens as we scroll. So the secret parameter is this scrub here. This attaches this animation to the scrub. The playhead of this animation will happen as you scroll, as you can see here. So the start is in the end of the page because the start is the start of the second section and it will end when the top of the last section, the second section, hits the top of the viewport. So it is happening as it should supposed to happen. It is already done. And what is cool about that, you can pass here like different arguments. For example, if you pass here like one, this will take one second to hit the value. So you get like a kind of deacceleration like appearance, the animation, when you release, the animation is still happening. And you can put this here like every number you want. For example, three, when I scroll this, the animation, even when I stop, the animation keeps happening, reaching that position that I told the GSAP to hit. In this case, would be those numbers here. But I don't like this kind of deacceleration because but it makes the page feels like lazy and not performant. So I will keep this as true. So it will be like in a in the same second the animation happens. And then all we have to do now is to find the correct values for the camera to pass here to find what is the position for the camera and for the target every time we animate this. So this is found by going to the WebGI 
And then, if you remember, we have like in to the animation camera views, we have each camera view. So we have this first one, which is already right. No, in this case, it is this one here. So this is the first camera position, or at least should be. We have the second one, and we have the third one that we set up during that design process. So what we are going to do, I will set up the second position that I want to, to work here. So what I'm going to do is let me just like hit some enters here to be able to see more things. So I will animate like two different things at the same time. I will do camera position to this position and also the target position. Or we need to close this one here and also this one here, I guess. Or I'm doing something wrong. Oh yeah. La, 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 la. Yeah, I'm inside the function and I was messing up with the, the tabs here. So I can keep this running by doing another two. I don't need to call because I'm inside the timeline yet. I'm just concatenating new values here. So I want the same animation happening inside this timeline, but this time for the target. And the positions I want to pass here these are those positions here. So for the second camera animation, when it ends, I want this position. So I will pass S position X 1.56. It don't need to be exact. The Y, it will be minus 2.26. Two and the Z, minus 3.85 and target will be minus 1.37 y will be 1.99 and z minus 0 0.3 37. Now we have the positions. Let's go back to our page and let's see the results. So it is stopping. Uh, I think I forgot to save. Yeah, it is. So I'm getting this very weird kind of rotation because it is coming from a very different like camera position and then but we will fix that like after let's make the third view but as you can see it is already working as it should only the first position is kind of wrong and we need to correct that and then let's do the, the next position here so what what we can do ah we don't have to use duration because the duration in this case will be the amount of the scrub happening here so you don't have to use duration or you can't use duration and then i will remove the markers because we don't need them anymore and then it is already working then let's do other animation here let's keep it running for the next section so this will be the last section so let's go back to webgi let's put the fire here again let's go to animations camera view this last one here yes it is the first 
yeah like the last one is the one that is correct so we need to change it back to the to the first position so the last one will be this and those are yeah this x will be minus 3.4 so just follow the parameters here, like this y x value will be this one here, as we did before. They are just copy and paste the values. This is wrong. <clears throat> and also for this, minus 1, 2.13. And the last one will be 0 0.4. Yeah, save. Let's go back to our file. Yes. So uh, there is an important thing. You don't need to have like on update twice here. You just call the on update on the first parameter that is animating because the, if you are changing the position for the camera it is, will automatically update the camera position and target position so you don't need to do them like twice so i think i messed up with the numbers ah no the problem is this always happened the section trigger so for this first section the trigger is the second one but for the second animation the trigger will be the third section it is just this class here so we need to change this or otherwise it will mess up because it is trying to animate the camera using the same trigger twice so now it is working correctly here and then for the last section it is there something it is wrong and i guess it is this number here i mistyped it yeah so let's see yeah so it is right here right in this one and for the first one i will correct this one using like the changing the file itself not changing the camera position i would say it is easier all you have to do is to load your file then go to camera animations and i will go to the first one focus view this is the first camera that i want and then i will export this again this new file here so let's export this download this again i would just make a backup so i'll call this through three and then i will go back to our scene and i will change the loaded file for through three save and now the first position is the first position recorded on the file the second position is that one that we set up with this animation and the third one should be correct i guess i messed some value because like it is jumping as you can see for the that position to this position here so i probably messed up with the values here so i will just check again and i will be back soon so the problem we was this parameter here so you need to tell this function that you are updating both camera and target position which is this case is exactly what is happening so we need to tell this function that we are updating both values and now you have the camera animation happening as you scroll and you can even do like other animation like animations to other objects inside this so for example if you want to move this title here at the same time you move the camera and you move as you scroll all you have to do 
it go like in this first section and then add another element to animate here this time this will be like a class so it will be the section one container so we need to pass this as this way like a class and what you do like let's say i want to change only the let's say the opacity first it's easier so the opacity you go to zero as we scroll like we keep all the scrolling trigger parameters but we we'll change the opacity over the play half duration let's test and let's see what happens so now as you scroll the text gets transparency so you can do also for example changing the x value so i will change x percent to let's say minus a hundred percent so now as you scroll you should see something that is not happening ah it's because i added the percentage value there so like right now it is hap it is happening like as you can see it is getting transparent and it is getting out of the screen so i can do it like by adding here i can add some like the acceleration let's make this one and this as you can see when you stop that animation on the background for this text is still happening at the same time so i will make this even more let me say 115 percent to make it faster yeah so now as you can see is going out i will make it positive to test so this is a lot of testing when i'm doing my stuff i'm doing a lot of this testing stuff yeah i like the previous result more i guess this is strange so you keep this as negative and one thing that you can say for example for this if you want the duration to be faster let me make the markers again this is totally connected related to, to the scroll trigger like animation not even do anything related to trigger as but as you can see this animation is happening during this entire duration if you want this specifically this one to end first to happen faster what you can do is make the end to be like in the center of the screen in the vertical center of the screen instead of the top so let's see if i made it right so now as you can see the end for this specific one is the middle of the screen so when you hit the middle of the scroll that text is already like in the end you can make this even like 80 percent so i guess it will be bottom here so and when you start scrolling the text is already gone as you can see so you can control this type of thing using like the default behavior for gsap what is different here is what we are using the GSAP timeline to control the camera animation. And that's it, you can remove this marker and you pretty much have like your page. Something important you might have to change is a one specific uh, setting here, which is immediate render you should set this to false otherwise this will try to render this those animations before they actually happen and we don't want this so for my user use case 
I usually set this to true to false and you can check on the on the scroll trigger documentation what it means but I what I know it is better for for us to do you don't get like jumps when you scroll very fast through the page you can get a better like working animation if you do this way and as you can see here i just changed the camera position for the last section different from the design just to show that it's possible and then in the final version i will make those back to top button and this one which are pretty basic it's just pure javascript to scroll to the beginning and the end of the page and i hope this content was useful for you uh, if it's the case you can drop me a comment you can buy me a coffee uh, on the link on this tutorial and I can see you next video where you we will be doing like a configurator for this. So I will show you how to click on a button here to be able to manipulate again the file, changing the the structure of the page so you can configure this Guru machine using 3GS. I see you. I hope you like it this content and please let me know how can i improve my work thank you very much see you next time bye